Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will share with you my ways how I am backing up and storing big amount of data. And actually this is not a simple task and I changed my ways a lot during the last 10 years. Also make sure that you watch this video until the end, because I will share with you my bonus tip how in several clicks you can backup your drives to different storages in different places. So let's jump right into it. I think that nowadays people are storing a lot of stuff. We have our own projects, some music, films, videos, maybe photos that you are making during traveling and so on. Which means you really need to store this somewhere efficiently and of course backup it. And it's not the easy task because the amount of data is really huge. And normally we want to watch our videos in 4K or we're making some photos, maybe 50 megabytes one photo. Which means we really need a big storage. My first problem was how to store my projects. And luckily as programmers we are working with Git version control. Which actually means that we have some remote repositories, for example in GitHub and GitLab. And normally we are pushing all our code there, where it is being stored. Also in said git our code is already versioned, which means we doesn't need to do anything and we can easily restore previous copies of our code. I prefer to use GitLab over GitHub because they have a bigger set of features which are mostly free and also they first introduced private repositories compared to GitHub. Also, just for you to know, you can store different type of data inside Git repository, for example on GitLab. You can store not only your projects there, but for example your document, photos, whatever you want. The only difficulty is that normally your repository size is maximum 10 GB. Which means it is completely fine to store for example your documents there, but not music or videos. And actually in one of my repositories I am storing all my documents, which is safe versioned, easy accessible on any machine and I know that I always can pick up the old document from the repository later. And also here is one important point. Actually if you are storing your files online only in one copy, like for example in GitHub, GitLab, maybe Google Disk or whatever, you can always lose them. First of all you can simply remove some file on your own and then you won't have it because you don't have a versioning or history where you can restore it. And secondly the company itself, doesn't matter how big the company is, can always lose your files. Which means at least like one per month you need to backup all files that you have online on some additional storage. But actually here we are talking about storing a lot of data. And for example if we are talking about online services they are normally quite expensive. For example for 1 terabyte of data you normally will pay 10 dollars per month or even more. This is why here we start to talk about storing our files locally. Because this is the cheapest variant. The main problem is normally people start to store their files in their working computer. For example they just buy a computer with bigger disk and then they store all their documents, projects, music, whatever there. But here are some problems with this approach. First of all when you are losing your machine you are losing all your data. Secondly when your disk is full then your machine will be lagging, which is of course not comfortable. The third problem here that normally you will buy a bigger drive. And bigger drive means that this is more expensive, because normally we have SSD drives and not hard drives inside our working machines, so they are working really efficient. But the problem is here that they are really expensive in comparison with hard drives. This is why my recommendation here is to never buy a huge SSD drive for your working machine. Normally you don't need more than 200 gigabytes just for your programs and operational system. And if you have some projects which need to be really fast and you want to work with them, then you just need to buy an external drive. I am using for my projects an external drive Samsung T5 of size 1 terabyte, and normally it costs near $100 and works really amazing. Also you can always take an external drive with you, plug it inside other machine and just continue working. But to store data locally and not work with them we normally want to use hard drives, just because they are cheaper than SSD drives. 
Quite long time when the size of all my projects was not that big, I was storing everything on external hard drive with the elements of the size 1TB. And it costs nowadays somewhere around $60. But it doesn't make any sense to use several of such drives, because it's simply not comfortable. Just imagine that you have three drives of 1TB, and then you need to know on what drive, what project do you have. And also it's really tricky to backup your data when you have more than one drive. Also the important point that not all people know, that your drives won't last forever. So normally your hard drives will work somewhere around from 3 to 5 years and your SSD drives until 10 years of time. Which means it's not the question how long they will work, the question is when they will fail. And if you have the correct strategy of restoring your data and hopefully you are not storing just a single copy of your data. When you need to store more than 1TB of data, it is nice time to start looking on RAIDs. So what is RAID? This is the redundancy array of your disks. So normally you have several disks and the data on them is redundant. This means that for example you have 4 disks and you configured their array. Which means when you are losing one disk, for example from 4, you don't lose your data. You need simply to take new disk and rebuild the whole RAID on the new disk. And here are two benefits why you want to use RAIDs. First of all, we can't really buy SSDs to work on them, because normally you will pay quite a lot of money if you want like 8TB or maybe 16TB of data with SSD. This is why typically we are using hard drives inside RAIDs, because they are cheaper. And you simply have a bigger storage inside RAID when you have 4 disks of hard drives instead of single SSD drive. Also the second point is that with RAID you can access your data faster, which means read and write operations are getting faster somewhere near the SSD drive. So my solution now at home is NAS with RAID array inside. So what is NAS? This is network attached storage. This is just a computer that is attached to your network. And then you can access files there and it is fully focused on the storage of your files. So I have an average NAS at home which costs $500 and additionally I need 4 disks there and each disk of 8TB costs me $100. Which means in total such NAS costs somewhere around $1000. But it allows me to store quite a lot of data and access this data locally in my local network. So now you know everything about storage. It's time to talk about backing up your data. And the simple rule of backups is 3 to 1, which means you need to have 3 copies of your data, for example one working copy and 2 places with backups. And normally you need to have 2 copies, so your working copy and one backup in one place, for example in your flat. And you need to have one more copy off-site somewhere not in your flat. For example, if you have some disaster and you lose files that you have at home, this is the only possibility to restore your files. So once again, three places, two of them can be stored together, but at least on the different drives, and one should be somewhere off-site in case of disaster. So here is my workflow. Normally I am working with my Mac Mini on the external SSD drive, so it is really fast. When I am ready, I am copying everything by hands through local network to my NAS. And now this is my first copy. Also I have an additional drive at home where I am storing everything from my NAS. So once per day I am backing up everything that I have inside NAS to my additional drive, and this is the second copy. And also once per night per schedule I am uploading the whole NAS to the back place online so this is not in my house anymore. And this is the third copy. So what is back place? This is really popular solution to store quite a lot of data online. So you can really just upload your data there and pay somewhere around $5 for terabyte of data, which is relatively cheap comparing with other providers. So if for example one disk in my NAS fails, then I simply put there a new disk. If for example my NAS is stolen, then I am using additional drive which I have at home. If everything is stolen or maybe some disaster happened, then I have the data offsite on the back place and I can download it from there. 
And here is the bonus that I promised. So actually how I am backing up all my data. Because what we want to achieve is not mirroring but backup. It means that you need to have the history of your backing up and you can restore some old files from the history. To do this I am using Arc Backup program, which is really nice, safe and bulletproof through a lot of years. And it's not free, it costs around $50, but it is really nice solution. Why? Because you can backup different things, for example your own drive or your external drives, for example your NAS or whatever you want. Also you can backup your data to different places, for example to your external drive or maybe upload to Backblaze and this is exactly what I am using. So here is my workflow. I have two tasks. One task backups my NAS to my additional drive. The most important point here that I am doing it by hands and not by schedule, which is also possible. The main point is here that additional drive is not connected to my computer. I am just connecting it to make a backup. And you need this if you want to avoid ransom attack or virus that you can get. The second command backups automatically every night the whole NAS to Backblaze server online. As you can see it's not that easy to backup and store your data correctly. And actually I changed inside my workflow quite a lot during last 10 years. Also if you want to improve your programming skills I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And I will link them down in the description box below so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding!